Hey, everybody. This is Kara Crossway Brindle. I'm Christina Murphy. And we are back again with Supervisionary to talk a little bit about how do you know when a client is ready to close from therapy? Mm-hmm. So we did a little role play as a previous video that was talking about how to measure that for a supervisee that maybe doesn't have this experience of knowing what to look for. Um, I do want to share that this is like a generalization. So not every client will fit this yeah. box that we're going to talk about, but we do have certain criteria that we are looking for that I think could be helpful. Yeah. So Christina, you want to kick us off by talking about how we measure trauma work? Cause I know that's the most nebulous <laughs> of our measurements to close with people having significant trauma. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Kara and I were talking earlier just about, you know, measuring trauma work. It's, it's unique to each client, but sometimes clients have to start stop. You know Um, we were just talking about that where um, you know, when, when clients are going through um, trauma therapy, they are um, you know, they come, they, they might just process a particular trauma and then Um, you know, some clients come in just with, you know, several traumatic experiences and as clinicians, we're like, oh my gosh, we, we need to process all of these. Right. And some clients don't have the bandwidth to do that. And so, but they may only be able to process the one one particular trauma that they came in for. And so we just go ahead and do the one trauma and then they may want to come back. And so once they've processed through that and they're done doing that, then they can come back later. Um, and I, we often see that in our traumatized foster children or our adoptive children. And I often tell my, um, you know, foster parents or adoptive parents that the, the children can come back in like six months or a year or whatever, or at developmental phases. And I tell them that they'll come back for tune-ups. So when they start to re-experience any kind of um, traumatic uh, memory, or when they start to increase in behaviors, then they come back for tune-ups is what I call them. So, you know, so they can come back for that love that. And it sounds a little bit more lighthearted than like the maintenance that you and I were talking about offline. So something else that we were talking about to measure a client's readiness for closure or discharge is their treatment goals and achieving those goals. Mm -hmm. So more specific, I think to adults, for those of you who work with adults, um, if they're coming to you saying, I want to work on X, Y, Z, and then those three things are achieved, then they might say, well, I don't have any other goals coming up right now. I can't think Mm -hmm. of anything else to work on. Um, so that might be captured in a treatment plan where it's like, oh, we are moving to maintenance or getting ready to close. What are your thoughts, mm-hmm. Christina? Yeah, something I've noticed too, that once, um, you know, once I am working with a, you know, a particular client or any client for that matter, I start to notice that I am, when they're really starting to when you were talking about maintenance, Kara, they're starting, I'm starting to write my notes and the notes are becoming really just, you know, one or two liners. And I liked what Kara, Kara said something earlier to me. And she said, like, the sessions are com- becoming more coffee, you know, coffee shop talk. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, surface yeah, level. yeah, yeah, <laughs> surface level. I like that. And it was just, and that's when you kind of know that, okay, we need to start moving the sessions to every couple of weeks. And I actually taper my clients. So, um, when I start to notice that, you know, I, I don't just drop them, right? I just don't go, okay, you're done. That's fun to, you know, I actually, you know, move them to every two weeks for a couple months and then I move them to monthly and then I do that for a couple months and then, and then they're, as long as they're stable and things are going well, then I um, phase them out of therapy. So um, yeah. And, but then that, but that's how I know, like the, the, you know, notes are just uh, for lack of better words, harder to write. You know, it's like, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is it. There's not as much meat to them, so to speak. That's Absolutely. how I know that the client is doing better. Um, Cause in the beginning, like you're just, you're actually having a hard time um, making them short, right? That's how, you know, the client needs to be seen. Things are really happening. And then towards the end, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to put in the note today? That's right. how I kind of know that the client is, is, is getting ready to phase out of therapy. Absolutely. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it kind of moves from like significant intervention or like modalities that we're bringing to the table to what I've called coffee shop talk of like, okay, it's very surface or like we're touching on things, we're in maintenance, we're maintaining, 
Um, yeah. But for a lot of us as clinicians, if you're like me, I get kind of bored with maintenance because it's not engaging my therapeutic brain the same. So I love that Christina kind of triages her clients down. I do the same where with further anxiety and for preparation, we move yes. to every two weeks or a couple of months. And as long as things are stable, then we work towards graduation because I want it to be a positive experience. Um, but yeah, I think as, as soon as the notes and the treatment plans start to have kind of big question marks to them of like, what did we accomplish therapeutically today? <laughs> I think that would probably yeah. be a sign. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So is there anything else coming up that would help us measure when a client's ready to close? I mean, I think obviously the, the verbal, you know, the, the disclosure of like, Hey, I think I'm ready. I've had clients say that, bring it to the mm-hmm. table of like, I'm good to go. Um, maybe I'll normalize on this video that clients can come in saying, you know what, I had a hard time thinking about what to talk about today or mm-hmm. in its worst form, um, feeling kind of like a dread to come to therapy because there's nothing really to unpack or to work on. So that might be another way to measure maintenance. What are your thoughts, Christina? Yeah, I think that. And another piece is if they start canceling a lot towards the end, sometimes you'll start to notice they'll, they'll start, you know, um, canceling or pushing their sessions back or, um, you know, because they're just, again, um, maybe they don't want to say they don't have anything to talk about or they just don't, you know, so that could also be another sign as well. Yeah, I think it's our responsibility as, as professionals to normalize that. So I've actually outright said to clients, like when you start to notice, if you start to notice that you're feeling kind of like anxiety or dread to come in because you don't have anything to talk about, or you feel like your mind wanders towards, I could be doing something else with that time. That could be a sign to have a conversation about maintenance and or closure. Um, so I want clients to know that that doesn't hurt my feelings as a clinician, that I'm not with yeah. them forever. So maybe this is something all viewers can take and implement in some way of like, Hey, set some expectations. When these things start to show up, let's have a conversation about the, the discharge plan. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously this video was inspired by a couple posts that we saw in our clinical supervision, social media uh, groups and talking about, you know, a supervisee's awareness of this. So if, I think as supervisors, we can also have this conversation with supervisees of how do you measure progress? How do you measure when a client's ready to close? Um, and a lot of it is very, you know, logic based of, do they have goals they still want to work on? Or are they saying, Hey, I'm not ready. And what is that about versus saying, uh, I, as a clinician think they're done and how do we measure that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that takes practice and time. So hopefully this video is helpful for all of you to start thinking about what would be those mile markers to measure that you're ready to wrap up or close or move to maintenance. Um, cause each client is different as Christina said but hopefully this helps you start to think about what you could put in place in your own practice.